ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah alhamdulillah hamdan hamda bila shak wa bila rayb there will come upon mankind a time wherein holding on to the deen will be difficult The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in that famous hadith Yati ala an-nas zaman al-qabid fihi ala dinihi kal qabid ala al-jamr that there shall come upon mankind a time where the one who holds on to their religion therein they will be like the one that holds on to a hot coal a burning hot coal bila shak wa bila rayb we are in such a time that it is very difficult for us to hold on to our deen and even more so our children we are in a time that we are constantly under attack we are being attacked from all sides it is a onslaught and it is a war that is unperceived by many but it is a war undoubtedly that is being waged against us It is incumbent as mentioned in previous khutbah that when we are faced with such odds we are faced with such a situation that we hold firm and that we are strong and that we are firm upon our deen the sahaba they are an extremely excellent outstanding example for us to follow These are the ones that we should be taking as role models because they faced odds that were even more severe. They faced situations that were even more dire and they showed conviction, they showed firmness, they showed steadfastness. And this is the type of steadfastness that we have to exhibit, that we have to explain, that we have to illustrate in the light of these calamities. As mentioned when the confederates came against them they were digging that ditch in preparation for this onslaught in preparation for this battle in preparation for this inevitability so they were digging this ditch in prepar- in preparing for that and they were saying as they were digging it those lines of poetry wallahi lawla allah ma ihtadayna wa la tasaddaqna wa la sallayna fa anzilanna sakinatan alayna وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا إِنَّ قَيْنَا فَإِنَّ هَؤُلَاءِ قَدْ بَغُوا عَلَيْنَا وَإِذَا أَرَادُوا فِتْنَةً أَبَيْنَا They were digging the ditch saying these lines of poetry 
by Allah, if it was not for Allah, we would not have been guided. We would not have given charity, nor would we have prayed. So, O oh Allah, send down the tranquility upon us and make our feet firm if we are to meet the enemy. Because verily these ones, they have transgressed the bounds against us. And if they want for us fitna, then we refuse. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi when he heard this, he said three times extending his voice, Abayna, Abayna, Abayna. We refuse. We refuse. We refuse. We are in a time that this has to be our attitude. When we are called to do things that are un-Islamic, our response must be, Abayna, we refuse. When we are called to believe and to adopt beliefs that are foreign to the deen of al-Islam, then our response has to be, Abayna, we refuse. When we are called to all types of indecency, when we are called to all types of sin and transgression, when we are called to abandon our Islamic morals, we must say, Abayna, we refuse. When our women are being called to show their adornments and to throw away and to discard their hijab, then our response to them must be, Abayna. When we are called to all types of methodologies that are foreign to the deen of al-Islam, all types of ideologies that are foreign and alien to the deen of al-Islam, then our response is the same. Abayna. We refuse. And it is a comment that we understand and we are able to assess the situation for what it is. Not for what we want it to be, not for what we desire and wish it was, but for the way in which it is. When we are able to examine that situation for the way in which it is, then we can properly prepare for it. We can properly deal with it. We can properly adjust. We should not have any confusion. We should not be surprised. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the best of mankind, وَلَن تَرُضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودِ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one who had the best character, the one who was the best of mankind, the one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose him and sent him as His final messenger. The one who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they, the Jews and the Christians, they will never ever be pleased with you until you follow their way. This is the reality. They will never be pleased until we follow their way. They will never accept from us until... We follow their way until we do what they say, until we act in a manner in which that they are okay with and that they have sanctioned. Then they will be pleased with us when we follow their way. But as long as we try to stick to the deen, then the reality of the situation is they will never be pleased with us. And if they cannot attack us directly, then they will attack us indirectly. If they cannot attack us face on, then they will attack us by proxy. And it is incumbent that we understand the reality of this situation. It is incumbent that we understand that the attack is an attack that is ayazuku. It is incumbent that we understand this, that they are coming at us trying to convince us that their way is superior to our way, that their lifestyle is superior to our lifestyle. That the manner in which they do things is superior to the manner in which we do things. That we need to conform to how they are and they are in no need of conforming to how we are because their way is superior. But the reality is the opposite. Is that what? Is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us with the deen. Has sent to us the deen that is perfect. Has sent to us the way of life that is perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, الْيَوْمَ أَتْمَنْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَنْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيْتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا That on this day I have perfected for you your deen. Your deen. Your way of life. Your way of life. And not just your religion, but the whole of your way of life. Every aspect of our life we have guidance from the deen of Islam. From the way in which we use the restroom, 
until how governments are conducted and everything that is in the middle, we have guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that which is even superior, that which is even more important, we have guidance as relates to how to believe and to how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are in need of nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has sufficed us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that He has completed His favor upon us. And that He is pleased that we have Islam as our deen, as our way of life. That we have Islam as our way of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that. So after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being pleased that we have Islam as our way of life. After Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding us, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except that you die as Muslims. Do not die except that you die as Muslims. After knowing this reality, who in their right mind would want to trade, who want to trade this in? Who would want to exchange this? For what? Exchange it for what? And exchange it with whom? Ya Allah. The only way that we can die as Muslims is that we have to live as Muslims. Because none of us knows when death will come to us. For some of us, death is close. For others from amongst us, perhaps we have a few more days. Maybe a few more weeks. Maybe a few more months. Maybe a few more years. Maybe a few more decades. Allahu a'la wa a'lam. But because we don't know when it's coming, then we have to prepare for it. Because that which is coming, then verily it is close. So we have to prepare by adorning ourselves with the rules and the regulations of the deen of al-Islam by adorning ourselves with that in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with by living that lifestyle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with by being good Muslims by being good Muslims this should be the mandate of every Muslim man and woman to be a good Muslim and to be a better Muslim and to strive constantly to get better to strive constantly to improve to strive constantly to improve and to enhance the life experience of themselves and those who are around them. To strive to benefit their communities. To strive to benefit mankind, kuffar included. Because when we show them the beauty of al-Islam, and this is what they're really scared of, because when we show them the true beauty of al-Islam, who in their right mind accept that they will want to join? Who in their right mind accept that they will want to accept Islam? Who in their right mind accept that they will want to reap the fruits and the benefits of this deen? Who in their right mind accept they will want to benefit from what we have benefited from? Who in their right mind accept that they will want to become a Muslim when it is presented to them properly? When it is presented to them in the manner in which it should be presented to them? When they see it in our actions before they hear it in our speech? Then you will see change upon the earth. Then you will see the people entering to Islam in droves. When Fajr looks like Jumu'ah, then you should expect to see change. But until we rectify ourselves, we will be incapable of rectifying others. Until we get it ourselves, we will be incapable of sharing it with others. Because in fact, it will say, La yur'tini. The one who is deprived of something, he does not have the ability to give it. Now, with this being the case, how do we go about doing this? Do we make it up ourselves? Do we come together in the think tank and then we figure out how the best way to go about doing this? No, no way. Why? Why would we need such? We have the mandate. We have the motto. We have the guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent it down to us in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent it down to us in the sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed this ummah with the sahaba so we can emulate them, so that we can imitate them, so that we can be like them. If we want to be successful, then we have to tread the way and the path of those who are a proven success. And they are the sahaba. They are a proven success. They are the sahaba. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, that he is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. Those who of the, the Prophet وسلم, said, that they are the best of mankind, who? the Sahaba. So if we want, if we want 
to be firm upon our religion, if we want to get the success, if we want to make it to the Jannah, then we have to be upon the way of the Sahaba. Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li jami'i al-Muslimin fa astaghfiru fa innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Alhamdulillah The great Imam Imam Ahmad Rahmatullah He is but an example Because all of the great Imams Imam Abu Hanifa Imam Malik, Imam Al-Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad, Rahimahum Allah Ta'ala, all of them tried their best to be upon the way of the Sahaba. None of them tried to contradict the way of the companions of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Ahmad, Rahmatullah Alayhi, mentions, Usul Sunnati Indana, فتمسكوا بما كان عليه أصحاب النبي واقتداء بهم that the foundation of the sunnah and this is important because <coughs> all of us acknowledge that we are from أهل السنة والجماعة that we are from the people of the sunnah the people of unity the people who come together upon the truth it is incumbent that we understand what it entails to be upon that way. Because if we are ignorant of the path, then how can we tread upon it? Now, if you don't know the directions, how can you reach your destination? You have to know. How do we be upon this? How do we be from Ahl al in reality? Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions, from the foundation of the sunnah with us, is that we are upon that which the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhum that we are upon what they were upon wa qtida'u bihim and that we imitate them that we emulate them that we strive to be like them Naam? because as we mentioned their way is proven wa maddali what's the proof of this? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِهِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبِعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, and from those who came first and foremost, what translated means, and from those who came first and foremost, from the muhajirun, from those who made the hijrah, and from the ansar, and from those who, they helped them, and these are the Sahaba. Ma'am. And those who follow them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the ayah. He gives us three groups. He mentions two or three groups. And if we want to get what those three groups got. Then we have to do what they did. We have to be upon what they were upon. We have to be from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, that those who came first and foremost from the Muhajirun and from the Ansar and those who followed them in good. Radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhum. That Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. If you want to go to Jannah, you have to be upon the way of the Sahab. Allah ta'ala, He goes on to say in this ayah, وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ Jannah, And we have prepared for them Jannah, garden. تَجْرِي تَحْتَهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا That we have prepared for them gardens under with which rivers flow. How long? For a little bit? Is it temporary? They can hold it only for a little bit then they give it, they give it back? Allah Ta'ala is خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا Forever. 
forever ever. They will be in there forever ever. That is the true success. This is the true success. That is the ultimate success. The Jannah. If we want to go to the Jannah, then we have to take the way that is proven to get to the Jannah. Now, if we came to the terms of the dunya, if we came to the terms of the dunya, and I'll say that the goal is a million dollars. Maybe a million is not what it used to be. Let's say five million dollars. Let's say ten million dollars is the goal. Ten million dollars is the goal. Now we have a proven way that you can get this ten million dollars. And then we have some ways that uh, we don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. They, they, it's, it's not proven. There's no track record. Which way do you want? You want to say I want the way that's proven. Why? Because you want that ten million dollars, correct? Yeah, of course. Who wouldn't want ten million dollars for free? No harm against you. No crime involved. Anything like that? Sure. Who would say no to that? No one in their right mind. Right. The gender? Oh, how much more better is the gender? How much more better is the Jannah? The Jannah is way better than the dunya. There is nothing inside the dunya that is like that which is in the Jannah. The ulama they mention about the houses in Jannah. That the only real similarity between the houses of this world and the houses of Jannah is the fact that it's called a house, a base. So that we can understand and we can grab the concepts. But other than that, there's no comparison. Totally better. Totally better. Now, this is the reality. So when it comes to the Jannah, will we want, why would we want to chance it? If we wouldn't chance it with $10 million, if we wouldn't, listen, most people won't even chance it with $10,000. They say, prove away $10,000, away, ah, maybe you get it, maybe you won't, I don't know. Which way you want? You say, man, give me the proven way, give me $10,000, right? And $10,000 is nothing. So now the Jannah, subhanAllah, how much is that worth to you? How much, how important is that to you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a way to get it that is proven. He said you have to be from the muhajirun. Or you have to be from the ansar. Oh, can we be from the muhajirun? No, we're not born in the right time. Can we be from the ansar? No, we're born too late. So what is our only real option by default? By process of elimination? What's the third group that is mentioned? And those who follow them in good. Those who follow them in good. Follow who? The Muhajirun and the Ansar. They follow who? They follow the Sahaba. These are the ones. That's the only group we can be from. So we have to be from that group if we truly want the Jannah. If we want that Jannah under with which gardens flow, rivers flow. Gardens, rivers are flowing there. If we want that, then we have to be from those who follow the way of the Sahaba. And why wouldn't we want to? Why wouldn't we want to be like them? Why wouldn't we want to encourage our daughters to be like Khadija, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Anha? Why wouldn't we want to encourage our daughters to be like Aisha, Rabbi Allah Ta'ala Anha? Why wouldn't we want to encourage our daughters to reach for this type of excellence? To reach for this type of excellence, sharpness and precision of faith, of mind, of, 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 of dedication, knowledge. Insight, wisdom. These women are examples for our young girls. Why wouldn't we want our children to be like them? Would we rather our children be like this actress? Or be like this singer? Or be like this professional sports figure? Or we want them to be like the Sahabiyat? Why wouldn't we want to be like Abu Bakr? Why wouldn't we want to be like Umar? Why wouldn't we want to be like Uthman and Ali and the rest of the Sahaba? Rabbi Allah ta'ala anhum wa arubahum. Why wouldn't we want to be like them? Why not? Of course we should. Because they are the best of mankind. Because their way is proven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He is pleased with them. If we want, if we want for Allah to be pleased with us, then we have the road map. And that is by imitating and being like the Sahaba. We have the road map. That is by believing like them. Having the same aqeed that they had. That is by having the same methodology that they had. The same minhaj they had. That is by having the same types of ibadat that they had. We don't come with no type of new uh, act of worship that they didn't know about. No kanafi khayran. If they had any good, they would have beaten us in doing it. So we do what they have done knowing that we would never reach them. Knowing that we could never catch them. Knowing we would never pass them. Because they are the best of mankind. Because they are the best of mankind. 
If you want that Jannah, we have to follow the Sahaba. If we want firmness in times of fitna, we have to follow the way of the Sahaba. وَمَدَّلِينَ وَمَدَّلِينَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ بَعْدِ مِنْكُمْ وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِ فَسَيَرَ خِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ وَالسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ مِنْ بَعْدِ عَدُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what translated it means. And those who live from amongst you, you're going to see much differing. اختلاف. Do we live in a time of differing? Yes. اختلاف. اختلافات كثيرة. Much differing. Much differing. The Prophet ﷺ said it's going to be like this. But he just didn't inform us of that without telling us the roadmap to success when we see that differing. Now, and we need that roadmap, right? When you, when, when you try to get some way to know how to get there, you take a map. If you're old, that's not, you take GPS, right? Because you don't know how to get there, so you need the, the directions. The direction is here. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالسُنَّةِ So it is incumbent, binding, wajib upon you, follow my sunnah. And the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa after you. The rightly guided khulafa. Who? The sahaba. Who are the rightly guided khulafa except for Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. The sahaba. Naam. We have to be upon their way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He directs us to this inside the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيِّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ السَّبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا The way the Sahaba leads to the Jannah. So, if we go against their way, then this leads to the hellfire. What's the proof? Allah Ta'ala, He says, and whoever contradicts the messenger, whoever contradicts the messenger, they they put themselves in shirk, and the messenger in shirk, for shirk. Meaning, they put themselves in one direction, they put the messenger in another direction. This is what it means, yushak, this is to the extent of the contradiction. Now, polar opposite, this is the extent to the contradiction. Allah says, whoever contradicts the messenger, after clear guidance had come to them. And then Allah Ta'ala, does he stop the ayat there? No. Allah Ta'ala al-Hakim, he is the all-wise. When hikmah was the al mawdi'ah, hikmah is to put everything in his right place. Allah Ta'ala, he says, and they follow a way other than the way of the believers. They contradict the messenger, and they follow a way other than the way of the believers. Who are the believers? Except for who first and foremost? The Sahaba. The Sahaba. What is the reward for contradicting the Prophet وسلم, after clear guidance had come going against the go, going against the way of the believers ate the Sahaba contradicting them? What is the reward? Allah Ta'ala he says, we leave him to what he left himself to, into him into the hellfire and what a worse of final destinations. So we have to ask for ourselves. What is our final destination that we are shooting for? Is it the Jannah? Because if it is the Jannah, then we have to be from those who follow them in good. Or are we shooting for the hellfire? Because the way to get there is to contradict the way of the Prophet said and to contradict the way of the Sahaba, and that will land a person inside of Jahannam, and that is the worst of final abodes. That's all that Ta'ala وأن يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون قولا فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام المسلمين وذن الشرك والمشركين هذا يا عباد الله والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة